Hello everyone. In the last video, we saw some motivation for why iteration is important in C++. In this video, we're going to take a little bit of an aside from talking about iteration and learn about some compound, aka shorthand assignment operators, and the pre and post increment and decrement operators. The reason why we're going to learn about these right now, before we start talking about while loops, is because they are very, very, very commonly used with while loops and with most iteration constructs in general. So we'll just take a little bit of an aside and learn more about some assignment operators so we can use them in our next video and beyond when working with iteration constructs. So we're going to head over to the notes. And take a look at the warm-up task. We're going to open a file called assignment operator fun in gedit and code up an empty main function. We won't write too much in this file, but it will be nice to be able to check our work when we work through an example at the end of the video. All right. So in our while loops, we'll have something called progress towards the Boolean condition being false. It's what we eventually want to happen so that our loops are not infinite. If we don't want our loops to run forever. We've eventually got to have a Boolean condition evaluate to false, which means we'll usually have something in our code that looks like this. And it comes in many different forms, but this is a very common example where we have a variable called count and count maybe starts at zero and each iteration of our loop we want to add one to count so that eventually count reaches some special value maybe like 10 or for example in the case of transaction fun five so count is assigned count plus one is perfectly fine c plus plus code it's very clear We've been working with assignment and addition for a while now. It works just fine. But this is so common in C++ for loops and for other applications that there's shorthand assignment operators that will condense this count is assigned count plus one into more smaller code. So for example, considering count is assigned count plus one, there's the shorthand addition and assignment operator plus assign, or it looks like the plus equals. But we know that's not equals, it's assignment. So count plus assign one is equivalent to count is assigned count plus one. In order to use a shorthand operator like this, you have to have the same variable being used on the left side of the assignment operator and on the right side of the assignment operator. That's what allows this shorthand or this more compact operator to be used. Since there's a shorthand operator for addition, you can expect that there's a shorthand operator for all of our arithmetic operators. Uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, and mod all have their own shorthand version. So take a look at these examples here and see how they expand. For example, product times assigned product is equivalent to product gets product times product. Let's head over to our C++ file and code up a few of these just so we can kind of get our fingers used to typing them. So let's say we have a variable x, let's initialize it to 0, then we'll print out x twice, but in between printing out x, let's try out some of the shorthand assignment operators. So let's say we want to add 5 to x. We could have x is assigned x plus 5, that would totally work. Or we could have the shorthand 
addition assignment operator plus a sign and have x plus a sign 5. So x was 0 and now it's 5. And I want to emphasize that with the shorthand operator, whatever's currently stored in x will be added to 5 and then x will be overwritten. For example, if I just have x as a sign 5 and I save, compile, and run this, I'm going to get the same output. But with the plus sign in front, we're going to be adding 5 to whatever value was already in x. Let me show you. Let's say x is initialized to 2. If I run this again, I'll still get 5 for my second C out statement because the 2 is overwritten with 5. But if I change this to be the add assign shorthand operator, this is going to add 5 to whatever was already in x, which is 2, 5 plus 2 is 7, and then overwrite the 2 that's stored in x with 7. So now we still get the 2 printing out like we had before, but because we're not simply assigning 5 to x, we're accumulating 5 in whatever is already in x to x, we get 7. So I'll give you a task here. Try out the other shorthand assignment operators. Just make up some examples so that you can see what happens like we've done here with x and the addition assignment operator. So there's subtract assign, times assign, divide assign, and mod assign. Now we're going to move on to our last set of new operators for this video, the increment and the decrement operators. These are used ubiquitously in looping constructs. You will see these everywhere, but they're a little bit more tricky than meets the eye. So let's take a look at them. Plus plus is the increment operator and minus minus is the decrement operator. Now, if the plus plus or the minus minus are in front of a variable, I'll show you an example. Here we have the increment operator in front of x. Here we have the decrement operator in front of x. These are called the pre-increment and the pre-decrement operators. If the plus plus is after the variable or the minus minus is after the variable, these are called the post-increment and the post-decrement operators. So what do they do? Well, the plus plus adds one to the variable. It's always one. You can change it to add a different number. Plus plus always adds one. Minus minus subtracts one. So an increment operation, the plus plus, is equivalent to x gives x plus 1, which we know is equivalent to x plus a sign 1. So these all add 1 to x. Same with 
plus plus x, having the increment operator in front of x making it a pre-increment, whereas this is the post-increment. These all add 1 to x. But the question is, what is the difference between these two, whether the add 1 operator is in front of x or behind it? And that's where things get a little bit tricky. In the case of pre-increment and pre-decrement, 1 is added to x before x is evaluated. 1 is subtracted from x before x is evaluated. And when I say evaluated, a synonym you can use in your mind to think about, okay, well I know how an expression is evaluated. That's when we go through and we use the arithmetic operators or relational operators or the logical operators in order to take two operators, uh, so you get take two operands and relate them using an operator. You can also think about evaluated as used. When is that value used? With a pre-increment or a pre-decrement, one is added to x or one is subtracted from x before the value of x is used in the expression, before it's evaluated as perhaps say there's a minus sign and something over here. Because even though in these simple examples I've used here, x with the pre and post increment and decrement operators are by themselves, this could be part of a larger expression. Now moving on to post increment and post decrement. Post increment adds one and post decrement subtracts one after x is evaluated or after x is used in the expression. So let me really emphasize the difference here, before and after. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have three integer variables, i, j, and k. And there's a sequence of assignments to i, j, and k that use some of these new operators we've learned. For example, we've got the shorthand for multiply assign, the shorthand for divide assign, and we've got a post increment, a pre increment, a pre increment, a post decrement, a post decrement, and a pre-increment. So this can get kind of crazy kind of fast. My advice when working with any complicated expressions involving multiple values is make a table. So let's make a table for this example. I can fit it right over here. one column for each one of your variables. Initially, i, j, and k are all zero. So we'll put zero, zero, zero in. This corresponds to the first line right here. Our next line, i is assigned two. So this overwrites the zero in i with two. So you can always find out the current value of a variable based on this table by looking for the last value in the column. Right now, i is 2, j is 0, and k is 0. Our next executable statement, j is assigned 3 plus i plus plus. This is a post increment. So we're not going to add 1 to i until after i has been used in this expression. So this is 3 plus the current value of i. The current value of i is 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. And mustn't forget about our post increment. 
j is now 3. Moving on to our next line, we have k is assigned 3 plus pre-increment i. Since this is a pre-increment, we're going to add 1 to i before we use the value of i in this expression. So we'll add 1 to i. i is now 4. We add 3 and 4 together to get 7, and we overwrite the 0 in k with 7. Second to last line of code here. We've got i times a sign plus plus k plus j minus minus. So let's go ahead and expand this just so we can see what this looks like. Because this is our first complicated example we've seen using a shorthand operator. So this is i is assigned i times everything on the right side of the assignment operator. Okay, so we'll do the parentheses first. We've got a pre-increment of k and a post-increment of j. So the pre-increment, we're going to add 1 to k before we add it to the current value in j. After we get the current value in j, we're going to subtract 1 from it. So add 1 to k. And then we're going to add that value, which is 8, to the current value in j, which is 5. So 5 and 8 is 13. Then we subtract 1 from j. So we have 13 is what we're going to multiply i by. So i is 4, 4 times 13 is 52, and we're going to overwrite i with 52. Now we're down to our last expression. Let's go ahead and expand this as well. It's good practice. Okay, so we're going to divide i by post decrement k plus pre increment j and then assign that to i. Okay, so we're going to pre increment j. So 4 becomes 5. Then we're going to add 5 to k minus minus. So the current value of k and then we'll subtract 1. So 5 plus 8 is 13, 5 plus 8 is 13, and then we're going to subtract 1 from k as part of the post decrement, and then we're going to divide i by 13, 52 divided by 13 is 4, so that brings us back down to 4. And there are our final values of i, j, k. So we have our assignment operator fun open. Let's go ahead and copy or type this code. Recall that it's good practice to put all of our variable declarations at the top of our function. So I'm just going to move those up there. It'll run just the same if we don't do that, but for good practice, it's always good to put our variable decorations at the top of our function. Now let's add C out statements, and we'll print out I, J, and K.
And we can insert these at various spots, specifically in between each executable statement, so we can get some insight as to what our code is doing and see if it matches our table. All right, so we've got all zeros, which is what we initialized our table to. Then we've got 200, zero, which matches our table. And then we've got 350, which matches our table. And then we've got 457, which matches our table. Then we've got 5248, which matches our table. And then our last values, 457, matches our table as well. Awesome. So this example can show you how quickly using these pre and post increment and decrement operators can get challenging. So I highly, highly recommend making a table. Uh, if you ever see something in code, perhaps out in the wild, you found it online, or maybe one of your um, colleagues, your coworkers code, or maybe on an exam, uh, you see something with a bunch of these operators, always get out a piece of paper and a pencil and draw these tables. They can definitely help you understand what's going on. All right, so let's wrap up. We learned the shorthand assignment operators, also known as compound assignment operators, and the pre, post, increment, and decrement operators so that we can use them when we start coding up loops. Typically, loops have a line of code or lines of code in their bodies that have some sort of progress towards the Boolean condition being false. And those executable statements for the progress usually use one of these operators. So now we're equipped. In order to head into our next video, we'll, we'll start writing some while loops.